I think we're entering into the part of the island where... The baby making zone? I think so. Our water smells like rotten eggs. We're all ready to go, packed, up early, fed, and guess what? The dinghy won't start. Look at them, they're just like... They're like hamming it up for the camera. There are two kinds of luck. The inherent luck you are born into, like having a loving family who believes in you. Well, what do we do now, Largo? Or being born in a developed country which allows you to explore your craziest desires. I would love to live up here. And of course, the one thing we take most for granted, health. We've gotten your teeth cleaned in how many countries now? <laughs> I don't know how many countries we visited. But then there's another kind of luck that is not exactly random, but is found at the intersection of constant preparation and opportunity. It's really good. Careful, they're still hot. Oh. You're not going to spit it out oh, again, oh, wow. are you? <laughs> we have lasted through to our 10th year of full-time travel because we never take our inherent luck for granted. Look at that, door-to-door -door service. Exactly. And we've used that to propel us to a life that will benefit the next generation and leave our future selves in awe of what we have accomplished. That was amazing. Join us as we head to Isabella Island, one of those places where you can't help but be impressed of life in its simplest form. This one over here is going to be like the evil eye. Thank you so much to our patrons whose support make these episodes possible. After a little bit of a rocky stay here for a couple nights, we are off. Will has officially got the cork plug in. We're hoping it's gonna hold and be fabulous. We've got about a, what, a 17 hour sail, Largo? I think it's about a 17 hour sail to Isla Isabella, which is apparently the Galapagos of Mexico. And I'm super excited because there's frigate birds there. Stay tuned, hopefully we'll have a great adventure to share with you guys. And where we're going around right now is called Punta de Mita, and it is super posh, super exclusive. Houses are in the million plus and there is a Four Seasons here. We looked up the price of the Four Seasons to see if maybe do we indulge ourselves? And the price was was 2,000 US dollars a night. Um, there's no indulging for that. The Four Seasons Hotel has nothing on this boat. Yep. That's right. So the patch I think is working well. We've been now underway for a good six five hours and six sponges is all I've got. I think it might have jumped the gun a little bit and not let it cure as long as it should. I have no idea how it looks down underneath. When we get to where we're gonna get, I'm gonna jump in the water and see how it, how it did. They say give it 24 hours, I gave it three. Not exactly the best boating advice, but the seas are, are very gentle right now. So there's, there's not much anyway, so um, I'm happy with only six sponge bowls coming out so far. It's 6.30 in the afternoon and we're getting close to where the wind's dying. Uh, we basically just turned on the engines. We had good sailing conditions for three hours around there where we actually got Hold on to this. We got up to 4.8 knots. <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's one of those crazy things that uh, Friendship hasn't seen power under sail at these speeds in, in a really long time. Um, we embraced it and it, when we finally got down to like 1.8, we said, all right, let's, let's turn on the engines. And so here we are. We're heading essentially north um, towards Isla Isabella. It's going to be about another 50 miles to go, so it's going to be all night, overnight, um, especially at these speeds. We're going about three and a half, four knots with the motor. Just turned it on. And Largo is inside building his website. Largo is developing, check this out, he's developing a D&D &D business where he's going to be, well, he is Dungeon Master, and he has people on the website with him, on, on Zoom with him, and he's building a website to promote it. I'll put it in the description down below as to Largo's D&D &D business. So if you have any kids that are interested in doing Dungeons & Dragons, it's it's actually a really cool experience to sort of do it online because you don't always have someone nearby. I can honestly say that I think I've only seen Green Flash once. And it wasn't even like a flash, it was like a hue. So let's see what happens. Hold on. Is it gonna, is it gonna, is it, 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 is it? Ah, no green flash today. No green flash today. Still a nice sunset. 
Good morning. You want to know the definition of flat calm? Oh, you just saw it. There's not a touch of wind and we have ourselves not a single ripple in the water that can be had except for what the, what the, what the boat's creating. And wow, this is gorgeous. You can actually probably just stop the boat and we can be totally still and not do anything. And if you're asking, why are you wearing a life jacket if it's dead calm and you're under motor and there's no wind? I don't know. That's our policy. That's what we do. I'm kind of used to it now. What do you see? Is that you see the birds? So you decided to <laughs> make this. Oh, her feet are wet. <laughs> see. see Why, this cat cool. is crazy. When approaching a new island, we always get a rush. It never gets old. Every new place brings something new to our lifelong story. Oh my gosh, we're now within a mile of Isabella and it is absolutely gorgeous. And there's, check it out, there's, there's, there's a bird floating on a, on a little log. Where are you going, bird? <laughs> Maybe he's just gonna float on it until it reaches land. It's not a bad place to hang out. We're going to that bay over there? Yeah, we're gonna hang out with those little boats. We'll be okay. I thought we were going to go into that cove over there. Uh -uh. Okay. So there are a lot of things that we do when we get into a new anchorage that are kind of logistics, business, take care of the boat stuff, which like over here, we put our covers on our winches. Um, there's a couple of things we put the covers up here. But the thing to make life really beautiful as soon as we get on Anchorage is one of us will put up the side shades so that it's really comfortable to work out here and we're encouraged to come out here with our computers instead of sitting inside roasting to death. And these are our lifesaver. We never use them in a marina and we don't obviously use them under sail, but they're really great when you're in an Anchorage like this where there's no sun protection. So cover everything up so it doesn't become death by sun and these these right here are original from when we bought the boat from the previous owner so they're not new so we're trying to take as good care of them as possible so we don't have to replace anything for a bit and then typically what we do is we take this off and we put it inside um, once or twice we've forgotten it out here because we've been so tired but other than that we bring it inside so again so it's protected by the sun the sun can do so much damage to boats and I don't I don't feel like we really noticed it in the med the sun wasn't as hot you know, you had pockets of it and then spring and fall and winter would come, so it would break it up. But we've noticed particular things on this boat that have just been gone from really nice and beautiful new to completely faded during our what, one year in the Caribbean and Caribbean adjacent. All right, so now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and do our, our check on our taping mechanism that we have for underneath the boat. Yes, I'm back into this, my, my floaty and, and my pool noodle. The cork seems to have held on well. Um, once again, this, it's not holding on perfectly. Um, I, I'm not going to blame the product. I'm going to blame me because three hours is not 24 hours per the instructions. But now that we are here, I think I may reapply, get some more acetone, clean it off, and then see if I can get it back in. living on a boat, there's always a problem. And often it's not even a repeat problem. So we have a brand new problem in almost three years, no, a little over three years. I don't even know how many time, how long we've been on this boat. That is a new problem for us. Our water smells like rotten eggs. And Will was messing with the water and making water and seeing what was going on, all this stuff. And he said, try this. And I tasted it. And I was like, oh, it tastes pretty good. But boy, that smells really, really bad. The problem is that we're kind of low on water. We have two jerry cans full and we can make do. We don't want to go back to the mainland. And we're trying, we're going we're gonna to try like all kinds of different things to see if we can get it to work. There's been a couple suggestions already. We've been asking friends. I can drink it if I have to, but I don't really want to drink it because it's stinky. And we don't want to make water from the water here and bring it into our water maker if this is a sign of bacteria or something, because then that can open up a whole other can of worms. So Will's messing with it. He's going to continue to mess with it. And hopefully we have a solution coming. Usually egg smelling water comes from some type of like growth bacteria. All of our pre-filters are brand new and the strainer that goes from the outside water into the pre-filters are all perfectly clean. So. It may be something that's in our membrane and our reverse osmosis 
water filter, which I hope it's not because that's the most expensive piece of the entire puzzle. However, um, I'm unpickling it now and I'm trying to see if that may be solving the problem. This is how fast our water maker makes water. It's not a very high output, high pressure water maker. It is, we make about 13 liters an hour. So we have to be very sort of careful on how we use water. It no, it's not, it's not too bad. Here you, here, you smell it. Century's coming to smell it. Here, you smell it. And this is the thing. Jessica grew up with like rotten egg smelling water. No, I did. The house. Yes, no, you I... did. No, it smelled like iron or like like it minerals. Like sulfur when it came out. You think out. so? You had to let the, the you had to let the Oh my gosh, go I think it's it. better. I think, I think it, it's better. I think it's yeah. better. Taste it. Well, don't taste it yet. <laughs> we still have all the pickling solution that's coming out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want to taste that. It smells good though. Smells good. You think so? Yeah, I really do. You do? Yeah. Okay, if not, we get, what's our what's our alternative solutions if, if it doesn't work out too well? DoorDash. DoorDash. So we, we have, have some, some alternatives. We do have some alternatives. We have water. Don't let them worry you. Today is the day we get off the boat and we head over to that island to do some exploring. We're all ready to go, packed, up early, fed, and guess what? The dinghy won't start. How's it going, Will? You think we're gonna get off the boat today? Yeah. We are heading out to a hike on a pretty much deserted island. There's birds, there's blue-footed boobies, all kinds of goodies, and ah, I hear magic. We were actually unable to take off because the dinghy wasn't working, but Will's fixing it now, and I hear good news because I hear it going. He said he thought it was just a clogged carburetor. Oh, I heard it go off. Well, nonetheless, I think we can actually paddle into shore if we need to, if we can't get the dinghy working. Do you sometimes miss the days where we were full-time travelers and didn't have a car? No, it works fine. <laughs> <laughs> it only took two hours. No, it took, I think it took like 45 minutes. Yeah, about 45 minutes. I'm messing with you. When you decide to anchor at a place like Isabella Island, time for all intents and purposes stands still. There are very few other cruisers. If you don't have better plans, you can easily stay a week without giving it a second blink. We have spent a few days just catching up on life and paying attention to the little moments. But there was a whole island right before us with a natural bouquet to explore. I think I could get some cheese and a cup of tea. I think you probably get some coffee. Yeah. So we got here at the perfect time because they're about to do a trash run over oh. to the mainland. And uh, they said they could take our trash too. So we had a feeling that hopefully we can remedy our trash. Um, we offered to pay them and they said, no, it's okay, we're going anyway. So, awesome. And this is where all the fishermen hang out. And these huts back here is essentially where they, where they do their life. They, they, go, they go out fishing all day and then they go out and deliver all their catches over to the mainland, which is, they say about 30 miles and it takes them about, they say an hour and a half to get there. And this is their, their living situation. You know, there's not a lot here. There's no cell service. I hope they have Starlink because that's probably the only way to sort of be in contact with the outside world. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's just basically solar panels, some batteries, and this is how they power up. Lolo's got his pizza sauce. They're donuts. Oh, donuts. <laughs> this is, everyone's got their own outhouse. This is really hot. Ooh. I don't think we were prepared in the sense that we were supposed to come earlier and I didn't pack suntan lotion. Margo, did you notice where you're walking? Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, they're sitting on nests. Oh, there's a baby. I feel like I'm the same. Don't get too close. Margo, do you want a baby sister? No. No? It's too hot. This one was looking like century. I think we're entering into the part of the island where the baby making zone? I think so. I thought we'd see like a couple babies. We're seeing like hundreds. If you're gonna come here, definitely choose the dry season, which is right now in, in May. And uh and get here early because it gets kind of hot. There's a lot of iguanas and they sound like a bear coming through the woods. And I look and, are oh, you okay? Yeah. <gasps> and I look at the iguanas and I'm looking for it thinking it's gonna be this big and it's like three inches. Largo! Class! Let's see if we can identify what this is. I think the fur on it might give it away. Or the feathers. Look at them, they're just like, 
They're like hamming it up for the camera. I don't think it's dead. It's dead. Is it dead? It's not moving. It's dead. You know what they you know what they do? They leave little plastic crabs here to make it interesting. Right? <laughs> Just like the things that jump out at you at Disney. Now, when they say that this is the Galapagos of Mexico, it's not that this is like a new found island. Actually I don't know the age of this island, but it doesn't seem like it's something that's been so sort of newly created by volcanic activity, although there is a crater here that is volcanic but um it's just it's so untouched that it is it's like a sanctuary for for life to just be existent without man hanging out here there's been very few boats here and for us to be able to enjoy this little bit of natural paradise is something else i think that there's not a lot of boats here that that are hanging out for a reason because the anchorage isn't that great however when you see what you have to go ahead and enjoy while you are here, you can see why it's worth it. Welcome to the crater. I think it's a 10 foot drop. Ooh, it's, it's super warm. It's super ah. nasty. Oh god, that's dirty water. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's nasty. <laughs> Logo, you next? <laughs> Basically what happened is we, when we were building our ditch kit, we did not have a water maker on board that was specific for the ditch kit in the event we had to abandon ship into the life raft. So we bought these water rations and now we have a water maker for our ditch kit and so we have all these water rations. So we're kind of slowly drinking them because there's really no, we'll keep some of them but there's really no point in keeping all of them. No big deal, I already chipped a tooth this week. Chip another one. Oh my gosh. This, oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. Oh, look at these. Okay, this is not how I envisioned them looking. Like, like toothpaste containers. There's your water it's ration. Not that hot, to so be if we're in a life raft, Largo, well, do you remember exactly how much he gets a day if we're in a life raft? That one packet's supposed to be a full day supply of water. A full day, well, Largo, Largo would be in trouble then because Largo and drinks like six of this a day. And that's half a liter of water. So you can, you can theoretically survive with half a liter of water a day and they put them into these individual size packets. Look at that. Chug, chug. Tastes weird. Well, if I'm in a life raft and it's a matter of life and death, then I'll drink these, but taste plasticky and plasticky. At the end of the day, it doesn't smell like eggs, so I'm okay <laughs> with that. Let's see here. Did you do it? Did you drip any? No. Wow, I just must have no control over my mouth. <laughs> Does that mean I'm a terrible kisser? That means you got a big mouth. Well, I'm a terrible kisser. <laughs> Am I a terrible kisser? Stop it. <laughs> One of the benefits of being in a fishing village is, well, the seafood is fresh. And we are not really picky, but if they have lobster, we are all over it. All right, we're looking for a guy named Ed Primo, and he's supposed to be the guy who can sell us all the lobster and fish that we can eat. Me contaron que... Si queremos, podemos comprar unos pescados, langotas si tiene. Langotas, sí. 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 Oh my God, we're caught in a fishing net. I'm like Ariel. Wow, they're in the boats, the fish? So the way that they keep the lobsters alive, so that when yeah, it's ready to sell, I, is that I, they I actually keep them inside the traps, inside the water. So they're just hanging out there, ready to be picked out and chosen to see who wants what. And they're gonna take us out in their boat to go pick the lobsters that we want. This is, this is so cool. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's cool. That's not small. Quantas? Oh, how many do you want? Oh my god. Wow. I think. Do you think we can fit that in our pan? I think we can. Sí. Okay. okay. You want three? No. Tres? Eh, ¿Cuántos son? ¿Cuántos son el precio? Dos ochenta. El kilo. Dos ochenta. El kilo. El kilo. Oh, do they have any smaller ones? Algo like... más pequeño o no? Just because of our hand. Okay, okay, that's okay, fine. That's that's good. Good. Okay, I don't want more than three. three. Okay. So without hesitating, we headed back to Friendship to do something we had never done before. Cook lobster right on the grill. First time on the grill? That's really good. 
You don't need it all. I'm, I'm just making sure it's cooked. <laughs> I'm gonna, we gotta get it off the grill. Mm. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This looks so delicious. It smells good too. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's delicious. So, I guess we should start comparing the lobster. You guys all know I grew up in Maine, so I'm a lobster connoisseur, I guess one could say. Right, Will? You're, you're definitely, you've had, you've had your fair share of lobster. I'm a lobster snob. So I love all lobster in Maine. Hard shell, soft shell, all of it dipped in just dripping in butter and boiled. Um, the lobster we had in San Blas, we boiled, which was delicious and tastes a lot like the Maine lobster. 110 years ago, Will and I got married, we had some in Virgin Gorda, which I did not like at all. It was very sweet and just not to my taste. This is a little more sweet, this Mexican Isla Isabella. Um, and I don't know if it's because of some of the spices I put on or that we grilled it and it has a different taste. I like it. Will doesn't like it because he said it makes, looks like he has a tooth. It makes a mess, we'll set on the grill, so. It, it, well, I just, I'd rather boil it. Boil it. <laughs> the cleanup's gonna be just a pain. The cleanup is a bit of a pain, but oh well, it's still delicious. So you see these birds right here, they've been waiting anxiously for the rest of our scraps and lobsters. As we've been finishing it, we've been throwing like the shells and everything overboard. And these birds have been pleasantly attacking everything that we've been taking. It's kind, of, it's kind of nice to make sure that everything gets eaten very well. But now they're just hanging out waiting for more. And it's like, sorry guys, no more food. It's all gone. No, oh, there you go. I guess I can understand. Thank you so much for watching this episode and following our family as we explore the world. Join us in the next episode where we find ourselves in Mazatlan and enjoy a bit of resort living and do some pretty unusual shopping. I'm gonna get the cat first. For yourself, not for Avalon. Although, for myself. If you're not yet subscribed to our channel, we would greatly appreciate it if you can hit the button below. Plus, another shout out to our incredible patrons who, without their support, these episodes would not be possible. Join us on Patreon for monthly live chats and exclusive content. Um, no, I wanna be here. I wanna be here. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I don't know if I wanna be here right now. <laughs> What's up, Largo? Why are we drifting backwards? Uh, because we are. Come here, pajaros. That's like me when someone puts cheese in front of me. <laughs>